In the ebb and flow of human history, rare are the figures that surge forth with the force and brilliance of a comet. Napoleon Bonaparte, born in the unassuming town of Ajaccio in Corsica, was destined to illuminate the world stage, his impact resonating through the centuries. In 1769, amid the rugged beauty of Corsica, Maria Letizia Ramolino and Carlo Buonaparte welcomed their second son into a world on the cusp of tumultuous change. This child christened Napoleone de Bonaparte, later known as Napoleon Bonaparte, would emerge from obscurity to etch an indelible mark on history. A precocious child with a potent blend of intellect and ambition, Napoleon's aspirations stretch far beyond the confines of his island home. Striving for more than the life of a Corsican noble, the adolescent Bonaparte pursued education on the mainland. His journey took him to France, to the illustrious École Militaire in Paris, the proving ground of his military acumen. Promises whispered by destiny began to stir in the heart of this ambitious young man, the first threads of greatness woven into the tapestry of his life. Unbeknownst to the world, the age of Napoleon was dawning. From humble beginnings sprouted the roots of a legacy that would forever alter the course of nations. Napoleon Bonaparte, an ordinary Corsican boy, was poised to become an extraordinary global figure. The stage was set for a legend to rise. In the rugged landscapes of Corsica, a fiery spirit took shape in the form of a young boy, Napoleon Bonaparte. His early years in this Mediterranean island, a place teeming with rebellion, imbued him with a sense of resilience and a thirst for power. This was an era of uncertainty, yet it was within this chaos that Napoleon's character was forged. Corsica was a tough land that molded tough people. Here, Napoleon encountered a fierce spirit of independence and learned the harsh realities of political struggle. His father, Carlo, was a staunch supporter of Corsican independence, but later allied with the French when they took over the island. These changing alliances would become a significant influence on Napoleon, shaping his pragmatic approach to politics. Napoleon was an avid learner. From a young age, he demonstrated a keen intelligence and a love for reading, particularly favoring works on history and philosophy. This intellectual curiosity would serve him well in his later years, providing him with a well-rounded education and a broad perspective on the world. In 1779, Napoleon left Corsica for mainland France, destined for the prestigious École Militaire in Paris. It was a significant move, a leap from the provincial life of Corsica into the intellectual epicenter of France. At this elite military academy, Napoleon was initially out of place among the aristocratic French cadets, a foreigner with a strong Corsican accent. Yet he would not remain an outsider for long. Napoleon's time at the École Militaire was instrumental in his growth. He adopted French customs, gradually shedding his Corsican accent, and embraced the Enlightenment ideals that permeated French society. Here, he studied artillery and military strategy, his natural aptitude for tactical thinking flourishing. He excelled in his studies, his dedication and discipline setting him apart. His years at the academy were demanding, but they molded him, shaping his mind and fueling his ambitions. Napoleon, the outsider, transformed into a distinguished cadet, his potential becoming evident. By the time he graduated, he was ready to apply his knowledge and skill in the real world. The Corsican boy had evolved, armed with a French education and a burning ambition to rise above his modest origins. In this remarkable journey from Corsica to the École Militaire, Napoleon Bonaparte transitioned from an ambitious boy to a man on the precipice of a great destiny. The foundation was laid, the modest beginning that would give rise to a monumental career. The Corsican boy was ready to step into the arena of history, unaware that he was on the cusp of becoming one of its most influential figures. In 1793, the port city of Toulon became a major battlefield. This was during the French Revolution, a time when France was divided. Some French people, like those in Toulon, did not support the new government. The people of Toulon asked for help from the British, Spanish, and Italian forces, and these foreign troops took control of the city. The French government wanted to take Toulon back, and that is where Napoleon Bonaparte came in. Napoleon was not famous at this time. He was a young officer in the French artillery, but he was already showing signs of his future greatness. He was given the job of coming up with a plan to retake Toulon from the foreign troops. Napoleon knew that the city could not be easily taken by force. Instead, he focused on the harbor, 
If the French could control the harbor, the foreign troops would be cut off from their support by sea. Napoleon's plan was to capture the fort that controlled the harbor. Once the fort was in French hands, the foreign ships would have to leave and Toulon could be taken back. This plan was not easy to carry out. The fort was on a hill and was well defended, but Napoleon was determined. He ordered the construction of new gun positions and directed the artillery fire himself. After a tough fight, the French troops were able to capture the fort. Without the fort, the foreign ships had to leave the harbor. Toulon was soon back under French control. This victory was a turning point for Napoleon. His success at Toulon showed his skills as a leader and a military strategist. People started to notice him. He was promoted and given more responsibility. Napoleon had shown that he could take on tough challenges and come out on top. The siege of Toulon was also a key moment for France. It was a win for the new government against those who opposed it. The foreign troops had been forced to leave, and the French had retaken an important city. This boosted the morale of the French people and the government. After Toulon, Napoleon's career started to rise. His skills and success had made him a person to watch. He was no longer just a young officer. He was a rising star in the French military. The siege of Toulon was the first major step on his path to becoming a great leader. It was clear that Napoleon Bonaparte was on his way up. In the aftermath of the siege of Toulon, France's political landscape was tumultuous, seething with conflict and uncertainty. The country was still in the grip of the revolution, and the existing government, known as the Directory, struggled under the weight of corruption and internal strife. A vacuum had formed, creating a space for strong leadership. This was the chaos that laid the path for Napoleon Bonaparte's ascent to power. Napoleon's rise began in earnest following his triumphant campaign in Italy. His military successes there garnered widespread attention, bolstering his reputation. In 1799, capitalizing on his growing popularity and the disarray within the Directory, Napoleon participated in a coup that resulted in the dissolution of the Directory. In its place, a new government structure emerged, known as the Consulate, with Napoleon as the First Consul. Although the Consulate comprised three leaders, Napoleon's position made him the de facto ruler of France. As First Consul, Napoleon's policies brought substantial change. He introduced the Napoleonic Code, a comprehensive legal framework that abolished the privileges of the nobility and established equality before the law. The Code also protected property rights and promoted civil liberties, reshaping the social fabric of France. Napoleon didn't stop at legal reforms. He restructured the education system, laying the foundation for the future generations of France. He established the University of France and several other educational institutions, enhancing the accessibility and standard of education across the country. In the economic arena, Napoleon founded the Bank of France, which helped stabilize the economy and encouraged financial growth. He streamlined the government machinery, instituting an efficient civil service system. Napoleon's approach was methodical. Each reform aimed at solidifying the pillars of French society while simultaneously consolidating his rule. However, the most significant moment came in 1804. Napoleon, no longer content with the title of First Consul, declared himself Emperor of the French. This proclamation marked the commencement of the Napoleonic era, a period of centralized power and an absolute monarchy. But Napoleon's rise to the throne was not just a power grab. It represented the dawn of stability in France after years of revolution and uncertainty. Under his rule, France transformed into a formidable nation and his reforms significantly improved the quality of life for the French people. France was undergoing modernization at an unprecedented scale, a testament to Napoleon's vision and leadership. However, Napoleon's reign wasn't without its contentious aspects. His dictatorship suppressed dissent and curtailed certain freedoms. His ambition to extend France's territories led to the Napoleonic Wars, a series of conflicts that would engulf Europe and ultimately contribute to his downfall. Nevertheless, at this juncture, those were future considerations. At the dawn of the Napoleonic era, he was at the zenith of his power. From a young officer, he had ascended to the role of an emperor, transforming France into a dominant European force along the way. 
This was just the beginning of his imperial journey, his ambitions far from realized, his story far from over. At the pinnacle of his reign, Napoleon Bonaparte, once an ambitious officer, held the title of emperor. The Corsican lad had navigated his way to monarchy through a sea of challenges and opportunities, crafting a narrative marked by relentless ambition, strategic brilliance, and groundbreaking reforms. Under his rule, France emerged as a formidable powerhouse, casting its profound influence across the length and breadth of Europe. Yet this period of ascendancy was perched on the brink of an epoch of upheaval. Storm clouds were beginning to amass on the horizon, foretelling an era marked by conflict and change, the impending Napoleonic Wars. These conflicts were set to put Napoleon's leadership and strategic acumen to the test and significantly alter the political and social tapestry of Europe. With our narrative of Napoleon's rise reaching a precipice, the question looms. What awaits the emperor and his empire? 